How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Trying to get used to this new setup. Let's see. Make sure I'm coming in. Okay, I see me. <laughs> Hopefully. It's been a long day, man. <laughs> Sometimes you get a holiday that makes the day even longer. So once again, you see it. We'll talk about the rumba. Rumba recorded a woman on the toilet. How did the screenshots end up there, right? So I'm always talking about um, mass surveillance. So and <laughs> sometimes technology gone wrong. So we're going to read this MIT article and just kind of go over it. I'm sure people, I'll salute to casual economists. Glad you can join me. Salute to Wayne in the house. Glad you can join me. So once again, we're scaring it in. We're about to start, about to look at the uh, mass surveillance of a Wemba robot. I, I guess I guess I wouldn't even think about um, Rumba robot. I guess I didn't know the Rumba robot had a camera on it. That's the one that kind of threw me off. So sometimes, you know, you can always have too much technology. So it's all good. So we're about to get started. Give me one in the chat if you can hear me. I'm sure y'all can hear me, but like I said, this new setup, I need to tighten it up a little more, but it's it's coming together. It's coming together. So once again, you know how we do it. If y'all got any um, questions, tech, cybersecurity, put them in the chat. Appreciate that. Casual economists, like I said, about to get started. Let's get on this rumba. <laughs> Let's see. So, how did the screenshots end up on Facebook? Rumba vacuum company says your images are safe, but a sprawling global supply chain for data. For my devices, I always create risk, right? So let's see how Rama gets their their images and their data and how obviously they didn't do a security review or had any governance over this data. That's how it ended up on the Facebook internet, right? So let's check it out. So we're just going to read uh, sections of it and just comment on it. So in the fall of 2020, gig workers in Venezuela posted a series of images to online forums where they gathered to talk shop. The photos were mundane, if sometimes intimate. Household scenes captured from low angles, including some you really want to share on the internet. And one particular revealing a shot, a young woman in a lavender t-shirt on the toilet. Her shorts pulled out to mid thigh. All right. So, but once again, you got this global infrastructure, global uh, supply chain, right? Because you got Venezuelans looking at the images from your from your Roma robot. The images were not taken by a person, but a development version of the iRobot J series robot vacuum. They were then sent to uh, Scale AI, a startup that contracts workers around the world to label audio, photos, and video data used to train artificial intelligence, right? So if you haven't guessed it, right, Rumba has artificial intelligence in there, right? That's how it knows what are obstacles, not obstacles, and how to really map itself as it goes to your house. And once again, they were sent to scale AI startup from contract workers around the world to label audio, photos, and video data used to train artificial intelligence. They were sort of scenes that internet connected devices, these regular captures, sent back to the cloud, though usually with restrictor storage and access control. Yet earlier this year, MIT Technical Review obtained 15 screenshots of these private photos which has been posted to closed social media uh, groups, right? Closed social, which means they were private, right? So these images are coming up shortly and we're gonna flick through them, right? So 
uh when you opt in to some of these things when you got uh vacuum cleaners and internet of things you got to understand what you're opting into right you obviously you were helping the robot but the robot was taking some pictures that it probably shouldn't be taking right shout out to jm i saw the vacuum in breaking bad news i'm sorry the breaking bad series oh that, yeah i need to get caught up on that i need i know it's an old series though but let's shout out uh, we're gonna keep rolling this they're the images we almost to them we're gonna flick through them so let's check it out again okay the photos varies in type and sensitivity. The most intimate image we saw was a series of videos stills featuring a young woman on the toilet, her face blocked in the lead images, but unobscured a granny scroll of shots below. Another image, a boy appears to be eight or nine whose face is clearly visible, is sprawled on his stomach across the hallway. A triangular flop of hair spills across his forehead as he stares with apparent amusement. At the object, record him from just below eye level. The other shot shows, room, shows rooms from homes around the world, some occupied by humans, one by a dog, furniture decor, objects located uh, high on the wall, ceiling, uh, rectangular box, boxes accompanied by the labels TV, plants, flowers, ceiling, right? So they're training the robot, which this is the rumba vacuum, right? It's identifying stuff, and so it's training a robot to understand what it, what it is, right? So that's the young lady in a not good picture. I'm glad he played it out, right? So image captured by the uh, iRobot development device being annotated by data labelers. Faces will have been obscured with the gray box by MIT Technology Review. So that obviously she's on the bathroom, which is not cool. So let's flick to the second one. That's the kid. He's like, oh, wow, something's, you know, um, recording him, right? Image captured by our robot development device being annotated by data levelers. The child face was originally visible, but has been obscured by MIT technology review, right? So that's cool. So it shows you cabinet, doorway. So if you're talking about mass surveillance, the iRobot actually is mapping your house out mapping everything in your house right so if the police get to state police or some authority right now they understand the mapping of your house right so so i guess the question is is that overreach or not are you familiar with the topics in iot professor yeah i'm very familiar with the topics and i wouldn't say very familiar i'm familiar with iot topics usually me and uh engineering cannabis be breaking down iot because a lot of IoT uh, topics are going to um, have machine learning and artificial intelligence. You know, I'm an AWS guy. AWS has a ton of services for IoT. So from that perspective, from an architecture, programming, uh, saving data, um, just the volume of data you get on IoT, then, then you write the topics are when you talk about mass surveillance, privacy. You know, I do federal work. So there's a huge privacy uh, proponent. Then, you know, if you want to, we might tap into GDPR, right? What you can do in the United States, you can't do in Europe, right? I'm familiar with NIST privacy compared to GDPR, right? And there's a difference of what you can do in Europe and what you can do in the United States, right? So, let's see what other things they got. Okay, they got the cabinet. They got the shelves identified. Okay, so we got the uh, data labels working it. I don't know what that is. Okay, is that, that's the cabinets right there. Yeah, those are cabinets. That's a door. Right, so theoretically, Rumba's come through. Really, if you got facial recognition, it took pictures of people on their face, so it knows who's in the house. It knows the mapping of your house, right? And probably if you got private pictures up pictures of kids right it's going to go through and map all those people right in their database along with mapping of your house so the question is is that is that overreach oh yeah if, yeah we were talking about that on uh i was on citizen lou shout out to citizen lou for actually uh sharing this platform with me yeah because we always worry about features jm we we're gonna come back and get the security later we're gonna get those features so we can get this rumba money because 
uh, most people are not going to really think about securing a, a robot a vacuum, right? Really, in, in the house, right? So that's really the capture. Shout out to my man, engineering cannabis in the house. Object identification software. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I was a little surprised I was actually in a rumba robot, <laughs> engineering cannabis. I guess I thought it would just go through, bump a few things, figure out the mapping. I guess I didn't know it would have the object identification. And two is, I don't know if you've seen it. I'll back up real quick. Uh, I know what you got here. It, the first lady was actually using a bathroom. So you can have facial recognition. Now you know who everybody's in the house. You got the kids' face. Uh, MIT review actually just blanked their face. But now you got everybody identified in the house, <laughs> along with all the objects. Right? So you got chairs identified. Shout out to objects. Uh, refrigerator. It seemed like the people had to label that to teach you what a refrigerator was. But once again, it's learning. Uh, heat and air conditioning units, lights, light, light. So once again, so now the Rumba knows everything's your house, all the people in your house, right? So if somebody was going to do a raid now, they got, they know who everybody's in the house, what you got in the house, where is everybody located in the house? So, yep, everything's identified, object identification. Once again, I do AWS, so you would use AWS recognition, and you can, you know, map it to identify everything. And once again, now the person, you got your recognition. Image capture by iRobot development device uh, being annotated by the data labelers. The woman face was originally visible. Shout out to MI Technical Review for blank blanking it. I can't even see what that is, but it's got pretty much everything identified in the house, right? And, or labeled so it would know in the future, right? Like engineering kind of said, you got object identification. So. Salute, fired out to AI and me. It has to be the robot sisters and object, object identification it has to be deep learning algorithm. This has to be a new Raya. Yeah, that's true. Now you're 100% right. So I guess I was perplexed you would have the deep learning in there but i guess you're right obviously that's what how they did it security is so weak in iot because the lightweight nature of them and performance requirements are most expensive iot devices are weak in security uh yep i don't know if that's a question or a statement but once again they're definitely weak i think though i think a lot of that could be remedy jam because most of that data once you get off the device it flows into the cloud, right? For analysis, labeling, right? So you can lock down your cloud, right? You know, once again, I'm in my AWS fanboy, but AWS, you got encryption, you got TLS 1.3, so everything at rest is encrypted before it gets in the cloud. Once it gets in the cloud, right, you can, you can have MFA, you can have, there's a ton of two, a two factor, multi factor. Uh, I can actually do. Three factor, I can give you multi factor uh, password encryption, and I can give you a Yuba key, right? So there's a lot of stuff you can add to that to JM. I just, I just don't think we, I don't, I just don't think the companies take it seriously until they make money, right? Because for until they make money, right, it's really a research project, and it's nothing they believe to secure until they start making money, right? So I think that's the the big issue. Let's keep reading. Like I said, they touching a lot of things in this article. I think it's going to be cute. I robot, the world's largest robotic keener, which I forgot about this. Uh, Amazon recently bought it for $1.7 billion, right? It's still pending. But that's uh, $1.7 billion with a big B. Confirmed that these images were captured by our in 2020. All of them came from a special development robot with hardware and software modifications that are not and never were present in the iRobot consumer products for purchase. That's good to know. The company says they were given a these they were given pay collectors and employees who signed a written agreement to acknowledge that they were sending data streamings, including video, back to the company for training purpose. According to iRobot, the devices were labeled with bright green uh, sticker. That red video recording in progress. It was up to those paid data collectors to remove anything 
deemed sensitive from any space that the robot operates, including children. In other words, our robot estimation anyone in the photos or appeared in the streams agreed to let the robot monitor them. Our robot declined to let MIT technology review the consent agreements and did not make any of its pay collectors or employees available to discuss their understanding of the terms. Right? And that's real big, isn't we do it a lot too? Is um when you get that long stream, you usually just set we call them T's and C's, the term and conditions when you sign up for anything on a phone, robot, IoT. Most people just click through. And two, realistically, right? They were paid, so they probably just clicked it and got the money, right? So um, got to be careful. Your data is not an entity, so your data wants mine and placing an algorithm is not a property. Per, I'm sorry, proprietary information. If the actual device software is open source, can you harden it yourself? Yeah, that's one thing cool about open source a lot of that, JM. You can actually fork it and make modifications to it. If you look like if you look at a uh, Oracle web server, it's just Apache server in there and they modified it. Um, a lot of times, depending on the version, you might have to pay a, a small royalty. But now, usually, that's a beautiful open source. A lot of times, they let you fork it. Um, sometimes they tell you you have to give any improvement back to the company. Uh, but a lot of the web servers, especially Oracle web servers, that stuff is built on the Apache and Tomcat. Right? Usually, they fork in, and usually, the big companies. They just pay a big royalty, then they fork in and they own that particular piece of code. So that, that's quite common. While the images shared with us did not come from iRobot customers, customers regularly consent to having data monitoring in varying degrees on device ranging from iPhone and wash machines. This practice that has only grown more common over the decade. This is true. I hear uh, data hungry artificial intelligence have been increasingly integrated in a whole new array of products and services. Most of these technologies is based on machine learning techniques that use large troves of data, including uh, your faces, your voices, homes, and other personal information to train an algorithm to recognize pattern. Most use data sets are more, more realistic, making data source from real environments like homes especially valuable often we opt in by simply using a product as noted in the privacy policy with vague language that gives companies broad discretion in how they disseminate and analyze consumer data right the cool part is at least they paid them for that use right so one usually once you pay it you kind of know right it's kind of a free for all on that right so but once again got to be careful like you said it was, was kind of a proof of concept special project the standard rumba robot doesn't have a, a visual on it right so they said it was special shout out to elevation you can always oh most definitely man anything cybersecurity or tech just drop it in the chat and we'll get to it yeah if you, obviously you're new here but yeah, you can see, just scroll up in the chat. My my people always ask questions, right? And I'll drop the link in a minute. So people will be coming up in a minute. And if I don't know, we got a ton of people in the chat that are IT people. So most definitely elevations, uh, elevation, drop your chat in there. And I'm sure the chat will answer, and I'm sure I'll chime in too. Yep, that's how we roll on this channel. Let's see. Data collected by the robot vacuums can be particularly evasive. They have powerful hardware, powerful sensors. Uh, said the PhD candidate at North uh, Eastern University. He studies security vulnerabilities on Internet of Things. Shout out to JM. I think Denise is going to drop with, or Dennis, my bad, is going to drop with some gems on vulnerabilities, Internet of Things. As they can drive around your home, you have no control over that. This is especially true. He has his device with advanced cameras and artificial intelligence like the iRobot J series. And the thing that's really scary, I think a lot of people miss is Amazon has so many different consumer uh, products it owns. When you start putting that stuff together and piecing it together, and that's, I'm gonna do a series on that. It's probably gonna be the first in there. It owns ring doorbell, so it knows what's outside and inside, right? The two is, People, they got a product called recognitions that the law enforcement use to do facial recognition. 
So now you start putting all their pieces together. Now they too, they know everything you order that goes through your house. So now this is mass surveillance at a huge level by one company. And so that's what we're gonna talk about too. <laughs> what is the responsibility of Amazon since they own all these products that are, I'm calling them evasive, that's that's really in your home, right? So like to engineering cannabis, Amazon has the truth. Oh, yep, Alexa, <laughs> right, I was just saying that. Right, too. Then once you put Ring, Alexa, uh, Rumba, because it's mapping your house, then you got to remember, and AI, you know, he's probably going to come up with They know all the stuff you ordering on top of that, right? So now you have this mass database. Amazon recognition is used by the police force, so it, it, it's getting crazy out there. I'm thinking about setting up a open VPN. Good thing. Server on a dedicated laptop. So I can on my VPN when I travel. Is that uh, practical? Yeah. Most companies actually do that. So I work for a large companies. Usually they give you a VPN client. So when you're off, an open VPN is definitely a, a widely used stuff. No, that's that's actually smart. <laughs> so no, no. No, that's definitely practical. Definitely practical. Uh, yes, I'm on Wi-Fi hotspot with no data cap or thought. No, that's definitely the move. Um, a lot of times on the wi-fi hotspot i would pair that with your mac address on your computer so nobody else can use that hotspot but who you deem responsible for the hotspot you can cut logging on so you can see if somebody's trying to attack your hotspot um so those are the couple things uh there's different levels of encryption i actually had to set them up for <laughs> for a client so uh we set the hotspot on and we paired them which it was tough sometimes so when you log on you can say okay save the mac address of the pc i let log on a hotspot you could go through and say okay my phone my laptop or you got a family these four devices can that's it because a lot of times people be jumping on your hotspot and you don't know it so uh now uh elevation that's definitely the move so my man james says yep i think that's the best now it's web three i'll have to do a little research but now web web three is the the for a hot spot the two as i would cut the web three on then i would do actually encryption coming for your vpn so you actually have a, a, a encryption tunnel inside an encryption tunnel so that's what we used to do at some clients you're gonna cut them buff on right because when you cut your vpn tunnel on and why are you using your hot spot right you got two encryptions going on at the same time which it'll work i don't think it's gonna really slow it down unless you moving a ton of data so i would do that encryption inside of encryption so let's get back to the article the data the data is then used to build smarter robots who purpose may one day uh go far beyond vacuuming and i think that's the thing uh right there too if anybody remember the jetson with rosie <laughs> one of my favorite cartoons right i think actually that's what amazon's trying to get to Right, I think Rumba's the step before you actually get to not a maid, but a robot assistant to do much more than vacuum. Right, I think that's the entry to your home. Right, it's the vacuum, but I think you're really trying to get to more of a personal assistant. I'm sick calling it rosy, but I think that's really what Amazon wants to get to in probably ten years. But to make these data set useful for machine learning, individual humans must first view categorize label and otherwise add context to each of the data this process is called data annotation there's always a group of humans sitting around somewhere usually in a windowless room just doing a bunch of point and click yes that's the object or not an object explaining matt bean assistant professor in technology from the university of california santa barbara who studied human work behind robots the 15 image shared in the MIT review was just a teeny slice of a sweeping data ecosystem. Oh, now this is super interesting. Our robot said that it has shared over 2 million images with scale AI, scale AI and an unknown quantity more than other data annotation platform. The company has confirmed the scale is just one of the data, data annotators that it has used, right? So it has to review to make sure. And that's one thing we worry about in security, right? It always sends snippets back to people to annotate, to listen, to make sure um, the products are working correctly. So we were worried. We were using a couple voice 
things to type and stuff. It was sending snippets of that overseas to a uh, third party company such as Scale Eyes. What if you're talking about business? What if you're saying something super personal, right? Those snippets could be sent to a third party company, right? That you opt in to, right? So that's why you have to read the terms and conditions, right? So that's what we're trying to get to. I'll uh, shout out to, no, oh, all good, all good. Like I said, my chat is super <laughs> tech and I try to chime in and uh, we, so the most modern modems hide your real IP address from what I, they try to, um, they, they try to rotate it, uh, for, from your IP address. The problem is usually whatever services. So if you sinking into your, um, your modem, your modem has to pull that IP down to send it to your laptop for DHCP. So. The, at least whoever like I Comcast or whoever Verizon, T-Mobile, if you hotspot, they got to know the IP to flow to their system so they don't have duplicates, JM. So somebody know who that IP is. So they try to hide it, but the I always think bigger term, of course. So when the search warrant comes, they knew what IP address that, that hotspot has so the, the government knows how to trace it and figure out where that IP was used and what sites you were going to. The human and machine learning is cleaning, identify the outright training algorithms with the new data. Yep, yep. But the question is a lot of times is you got to understand sometimes that stuff is not, let me rephrase that. Most of the time that stuff is going overseas, right? So can an overseas company look at the data you're using, right? Most people know I used to work for the Fed and DOD. There's some data that we call it CONUS, continental United States. It cannot leave the United States soil to go over to China or Venezuela. I think at the top they said Venezuela. That We would get a fine for that if the government saw our data being sent overseas, even if it was to get to review. So you as a future cybersecurity person or a cybersecurity person like me, is that's one thing we need to understand is where is the data being moved at? So, right, so we got to make sure we understand where that is. Right, we don't we don't want that to happen, right? <laughs> That'd be a big fine, right? So, two million, man, that's a lot of images, right? And that was remember that was a uh, for a pilot, that was for a small scale project. Uh, James, uh, I robot spokesman said in an e email the company had taken every precaution to ensure that personal data is uh, uh, processed securely in accordance with applicable laws. The image shared with MIT Technologies was shared in violation of a written non-disclosure agreement between iRobot and the image annotation server provider. In an email statement a few weeks after that to share an image with the company, iRobot CEO Callan, iRobot is terminating its relationship with the service provider who leaked the images and actively investigating the matter and is taking measures to help prevent a similar leak by any services provider in the future. The company did not respond to additional questions about the measure, right? So like we talked about, you cannot let your data go overseas to Venezuela, or at least it should not be shared with MIT. But when your data leaves your facilities, what contract do you have with your third party? What security level are they in, right? Are they doing background checks for their people, right? You as a security professional has got to vet your third parties. Right, third party APIs or third party companies, right? You still got to vet them to make sure they're security, or you could get a fine like they're getting. Let's see, Jim, if you want to be really nice for you, you need an IP connection that can't be traced. They're always going to be trace elevation because that puck's got to give you that IP. So, whoever that provider that puck is, they really know your IP, right? So it, it can be traced. I promise you, it can be. We trace them at work. So I know even through VP is right. It's hard now. Don't get me wrong. It's hard. Greetings. I think this is. A, I think chain proxy is a way to stay anonymous. Yep, a proxy is gonna help. Same thing with a VPN. Uh, Zoom was sending that. Oh, facts, 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 facts. Um. <laughs> Zoom, if you go out there and look, and I did a video on this, right? Zoom has different levels you can pay for. There's a special level for HIPAA and FairRamp. They make sure that data doesn't get over sent overseas, right? 
So you have to pay more for that elevation, which you shouldn't have to pay. Shout out to uh, my man, Chaos Rain. Go subscribe to him. I know he's trying to get to that 1,000K mark. Uh, big milestone. JM Chain Prox, I agree. What do you think about then as Cat 2 is a way to see him? Um, um, what you mean you purchase it with cash? But even if you purchase it with cash, if you purchase it to Verizon, right, they, they send you the IP address for your DHCP. So you can, because you need an IP address somehow to move on the internet. So w whatever service you use using, they're going to know what that IP address. Is. So if you pay cash, you still got to connect that to a service, be Verizon, Apple, uh, T-Mobile, right? Those give your IP addresses from those hotspots. So I don't think that's true elevation. Let me know if that makes sense, because when you put your hotspot in, I, we configure them at work. Right. So when you connect to your hotspot and that's why we always say take your hotspot and your Mac on your uh, phone or your laptop, pair them up. So on your hotspot. But as soon as that hotspot connects to the service to give the laptop the IP. Right. The serp, the the vendor knows that IP that your hotspot got. So I don't think just because you pay cash for it. Now, granted. It's going to be hard, especially if you're using a VPN, especially if you're using a proxy, right? Because now you're bouncing that stuff off of other IPs, but I still think that initial hotspot from the IP is going to tell you where you're at. But we're talking about the identity of the person who's using the hotspot. <laughs> That's true, but so if you, so if you buy the hotspot, nine times out of ten the service asks you to pay for it right and most of those are reoccurring now i guess you could buy a hot spot and give it to somebody else right and so to make it a little harder so i <laughs> i pause because most times if you buy a hot spot in cash right you you could theoretically purchase it from somebody else right and they wouldn't know who your identity is so that that's true that's true but somebody would have to purchase it somebody nine times out of ten is uh most hot spots this is a reoccurring fee so they want to bill you so they want a credit card or paypal account right so they can bill you No, it makes it a little harder. I see what you're saying. The the problem is, which which long as you're careful, but is, and I see a lot of people do this. Okay, you use Onion, but then you sign in with Gmail on your laptop, right? A lot of times, too, is even though you're using Onion, you got to be careful because most times when you're accepting those cookies, those cookies know somebody's on it, right? So if you log in your Gmail and start using cookies, right, it's going to paste those together, right? So I'm not saying you can't be totally anonymous. It's just hard to do that. Next time you go to a truck shop, you see a hot spot. Oh, I always see hot spots there, right? My uncle's drives truck. Most of the times they pay for their hot spots with, with credit cards, right? Because they want to bill their hot spot to the company they're driving for. But I, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Man, no, I, I understand what you're saying. You, you can do it. It's just... It's just hard. It's just hard. Because like I said, as soon as you sign in with Gmail or accept cookies from somebody or pay something online, right? Because everybody's dropping cookies so they can track you through the whole internet, right? But no, you, you right. You you can try to hide your thing. The, the problem is it's so many ways to hook you to that, right? So let's say you use a pronto mail fence. You go, you go in and set it up at a bar. You doing it while you eating lunch. I got a webcam now with the timestamp of where you at with that hotspot in there, right? To link out together. No, I'm with you. That that's the only problem with it. That's the only problem with it because usually when you driving, if I 
I'm I'm pinging your IP address off your hotspot. So if you drive through a, a tollway, your pictures on there. But no, you you can try to get anonymous with that, and you can get close. I mean, like you said, security onion. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the browser you can put on anonymous. It'll bounce through IPs from Alaska right to try to hide you. Although this setup images represent a something bigger than individual company action, they speak for a widespread growing practice of sharing potential sensitive data to train algorithms where a surprising global spanning journey that single images can take, in this case, from homes in North America, Europe, and Asia to servers in uh, Massachusetts-based iRobot, from there to San Francisco-based scale to AI, and finally, the scale contract data is around the world, including instances, the Venezuela gig workers who posted an image to a private group, Facebook, Discord, and elsewhere, right? So you went through all these major companies, through a San Francisco um, scale AI to Venezuela gig workers, right? I mean, they're 1099. They just paid them a little amount of money to identify these pictures. And somebody dumbass posted them on Facebook and Discord, right? So third party uh risk is huge and uh, when you think it's something man, who would think third party risk inside of a rumba would be an issue when they first did it who would think of a uh, third party risk in rumba would would cause that to happen right together images of reveal a whole data supply chain new points where personal information can leak out the views can of consumers are even aware of it's not expected a human being is going to be reviewing the raw footage, emphasized Justin from the Tech Policy of Consumer Reports, former policy director of FTC office. Our robots should know should not say whether the data collectors were aware of the humans. In particular, we would be viewing these images. The company said the consent made it clear that the service provider would be right. So they're hiding behind. Oh, they hit the terms and the conditions, and we paid them so they know, right? Once again, you gotta understand your third party risk, right? That's really the next big bag in IT, really, is third party risk, right? Because you got GDPR, you just saw it from this thing, is you moving data through different countries, right? Which is gonna have different privacy laws right so understanding those privacy laws in different countries right that leaked out that left the united states that came out i will believe europe's going to give amazon a huge fine i think our ftc is going to probably give them a hundred million dollar fine for what a proof of concept right that wasn't really the real um rumbles they were using for that right but that's the future of privacy and data and how you actually move for that. Uh, but what do you think about session instant messenger in an encryption? It doesn't require a phone or email to sign up. No, I think instant messenger, uh, Apple, um, and even uh, Facebook, like you said, messenger, everybody's trying to get into encryption, right? The government calls it going dark, so it makes it super hard for them to track you. Right, and Apple's notorious for doing that. Apple's actually put the keys uh, on the phone. So they tell the government, we don't have the keys, so we can't give you data. The keys are actually on the phone encrypted, right? So um, it's going dark. So I think the government's trying to figure out, the government's trying to force big companies to put back doors in there so they can see your data because so many companies are doing in the encryption. Um, I think Twitter was just saying they put in the end encryption in. So I was going to do a video of that, but it's kind of going dark. Everybody's going in the encryption. Everybody's using large keys for encryption now. So I think that part is actually um, getting better. So I blink and early old <laughs> security cameras. I do not, <laughs> I don't know, blink employees are not looking at my cameras. Um, they're looking at your cameras. I guess the question is, do most people with their cameras have a service, right? It's usually part of their alarm system, right? ADT has cameras, right? Ring has cameras, and Ring actually hooks it up to the sheriff's office. 
So most of those actually, I appreciate that chaos, right? Hit that like button. <laughs> but now, so most, and especially uh, Ring actually gave you a discount. And people didn't know if you opt into the discount for that file, they were actually sending those fees to your local police department, right? So you could be walking in front of somebody's house and then Ring is pointed outside and your face is ended up at your local sheriff's office, right? So a lot of people don't realize what they're actually opting into. Let's see. The iRobot vacuum revolution. Uh, robot vacuums were always so smart. Early, in, I guess, in the Swedish version in 2001, it just used ultrasonic sensor, sensor, sensors to locate the walls and plot cleaning pattern. Additional bump sensors on the side and cliff sensors at the bottom help it avoid running into objects or falling off stairs, but these sensors were glitchy, leading robots to miss certain areas or repeat areas. The results were unfinished and unsatisfactory. So I guess we had to bump up, man. It wasn't satisfactory. Sure, I robot released the first generation, which relied on basic bump sensors and turning sensors, much cheaper than its competitors. It became the first show, first commercially successful robot vacuum. The most basic model today will operate similarly with mid-range cleaning incorporated better sensors, other navigational techniques like simultaneous localization and mapping to find a place in the room and chart out better cleaning paths. High-end devices are moved on to computer vision, as artificial intelligence that approximate human sites by training algorithms to extract information from images and videos and or LIDARs. A laser based sensing techniques used by NSA, I'm sorry, NASA, and widely considered the most accurate but most expensive navigational technology on market today. So they went from <laughs> basic sensors to now they got laser based sensor techniques used by NASA. <laughs> so uh, computer vision depends on high definition cameras, but our account only a dozen companies have incorporated the face front-facing cameras into their robots for navigation and object recognition, as well as increasingly home monitoring. This includes the top three robot vacuum makers. By market share, iRobot has 30% of the market share and sold over 40 million devices. EcoVax has 15% and Robot Rock, which has another 15%, according to market's intelligence. So iRobot's killing it. It also includes uh, familiar household uh, appliance makers like Samsung, LG, Dyson, and all some 23.4 million robot vacuums were sold in Europe and the Americas in 2021 alone. Wow, that's a lot of vacuums. <laughs> From the start, our robot went on with the computer vision. His first device, such capabilities, was the 980 in 2015. It also is the first of the iRobot Wi-Fi enabled devices, well as its first could map a home, adjust its cleaning strategy on the basis of room size and identify basic obstacles to avoid. The computer vision allows the robot to see full richness of the world around it. Uh, iRobot's chief technology officer uh, allows robots devices to avoid cords on the floor, understand that that's a couch. But the computer vision in a robot vacuum is truly works as an attendant. Manufacturers need to train it on high quality, diverse data sets that reflect a huge range of what they might see. The variety home environment is very difficult task, said uh, senior R&D uh, from Robot Rock. Road systems are quite standard, he says. So for makers of self-driving cars, you will know the lane looks like. However, the traffic sign looks like, but each home interior is vastly different. So he's saying that, is he saying that the robot is more complex than a car driving on the street? <laughs> so, wow. The furniture is not standardized. You cannot expect what will be on the ground. So there's a sock there, maybe some cables. Maybe the cables look different in the United States, right? So that's a vacuum cleaner, watching everybody and learning. Let's see what the chat said. 
the review spoke with or questions uh, to 20 comps on robot vacuums, found that they respond to the challenge of gathering training differently. I rub by case over 90% of its images are sent comes from real homes whose residents are either iRobot employees or volunteers recruited by third party data vendors. iRobot declined to identify, which using development devices agreed to allow robot to collect data, including uh, video streams, devices running often in exchange for incentives for participation. According to the statement, the company declined to specify these incentives, saying that they're only based on the length and complexity. Usually you just get it for free. That's what the incentives are. The company's training data comes from a robot called Stage Data Collection, in which the company builds models uh, that's in thin records. Our robot also become regular consumers. Uh, the opportunity to opt in to uh, contributing training data through its apps, where people can choose to send specific images or op obstacles to computer service to improve its algorithms. Our robot says customer participation in this user in the loop training. Also known, the company receives also specific images and no others. The company representative says in the email that such images have not been used to train any algorithms, right? So, and once again, that's common with anything. Usually when you opt in, and that's the thing probably over the last 15 years, most of these products, since you don't, pay for them you pay for our robot but a lot of apps since you opt in for free you train in a robot for free you train the app for free right you train it to do stuff right so when you use mapping software from uh map quest and google right they use that training for uh autonomous driving autonomous vehicles are going to use the maps where you're driving right in the future right so that's what you sign up for free Right, you're training the algorithms to do that, which is cool. Which is cool. In contrast, in contrast to our robot, Rock said that the product is on images in its labs or works with third party vendors in China who are specifically asked to capture and provide images or objects on the floor for training purposes. Meanwhile, Dyson, which sells two high end robots, vacuum models, said it gathers data from two main sources. Home trialists within Dyson's research and development department with the uh, security clearance, increasingly synthetic or AI generated training data. Right, a lot of people use, uh, I won't call it uh, training data, but most vacuums companies at MIT review uh, spoke explicitly said that they do not use customer data to train the machine learning algorithm. Samsung did not respond to question how it sources its data, though it wrote that it does not use scale AI for data annotations. Uh, EFLO facts calls the source of training's data confidential. LG and Bosch did not respond to requests and comment. Right? So, so once again, we're going to dig through this article. I think they're touching on some cool points. Uh, once again, AI, machine learning, training, taking data you just got to understand what you opt in what you could be sending overseas right and two is hopefully you're not looking at anything all right i appreciate that uh wayne wallace I'm out. let's see elevation inside a hyper v virtual machine should i install a separate vpn for each instance uh i wouldn't uh especially if you're talking about home I've seen people do that for <laughs> top secret uh, information, I would, but no, nah, I wouldn't start a VPN. Now, if you're learning, you want to do it for practice, but for practical security, um, I I wouldn't do that. Because um, usually if somebody hacks one VPN, how you build it or whatever vulnerabilities you have one, even though they're separate, uh because you're going to probably be using the same vpn vendor uh so create separate ones unless you're going to use different vpn vendors I, I wouldn't think you would gain much security um uh i don't think you would uh lower the risk that much just using a vpn in itself is going to lower your risk uh you probably <laughs> 
installing multiple VPNs is going to make it much more complex. So you might mess up the uh, configuration. So the complexity versus the ease of use, I will use the same VPN in each one. But you're not going to use, yeah, but you're going to have two, right? Your main is going to have a VPN, but each each one of your instances is going to have the same VPN software, right? Let me keep digging through. Some clues about methods of data collection comes from uh, the IoT hackers who office in Northeastern uh, piled high with robot factories that he reverse engineering, giving them access to their machine learning modules. Wow, that's that's deep. That's deep right there. Um, some of the produced by Dream, relatively new company based in Chinese, sells affordable, rich feature ones. Uh, found that the Dream vacuums have a folder labeled uh, HI server as well as images uploaded functions. Company also says that the company data is never sent to the cloud or whatever. It just said when I when I had access to the device, I was basically able to prove that that's not true. Even that if, even if they didn't actually upload any of the photos he had, a lot of times just they're just uploading the metadata. So right, they're not uploading the photos; they're uploading the the data about the photo. Right, so that's when your lawyers are actually parsing words. Right. Dream manufacturer robot vacuums also uh, rebanded, so to other companies, including these, were employed by other brands. Dream did not respond to the email question that data was collected by customer service, but in the days following the MIT review outreach, the company began changing its privacy policies, including those on how it's collecting personal data and pushing out multiple firmware updates. But without either an explanation from the companies themselves or a way uh, besides hacking and testing their assertion, it's hard enough for sure how they're collecting customers for training purposes, right? And that's the big deal. Like you said, where they're sending their data, who's responsible for that data. <laughs> Hopefully, you're not sending it off for uh, United States soil, but we also saw those with gig workers in Venezuela that actually posted. So we know that's not true. So. No, sir, a different VPN for different VPN software vendors. Okay. Nord with the Proto VPN. Yeah, I like yep, yeah, I like Nord VPN. So now that would be cool. Hi, why are your data ends up halfway around the world with the raw data required for machine learning algorithms? Come to need for labor and lots of it. That's where data annotation comes in. A young but growing industry, data annotation is projected to reach 13 billion by 2030. So, um, and I probably more quests for engineering cannabis. So, is that just people <laughs> labeling it what what the robot sees to make sure it's correct? Right. So, we may we need to do our uh, <laughs> uh, data annotation. A data annotation company, right? We just say what the robot said and said if it was correct. The field took off largely to meet human need to label data to train algorithms used in self driving cars. Today, data labels are often low paid contract workers in developing countries. Help power much of we take for granted as an automated online. They keep the worst of the internet off social media feeds by manually categorizing and flagging posts. Improve voice recognition software by transcribing low quality audio. Helps robot vacuum recognize objects in their environments by tagging photos and videos. Among a myriad of companies, this has popped up over the past decades. Skill has become a market leader founded in 2017. It's built the business model around contracting with remote workers in less wealthy nations at a cheap project or tax back rates. Its proprietary crowdsourcing platform. In 2020, Scale posted a new assignment with Project IO. It featured images captured from ground and angled upward roughly 45 degrees, show wild ceiling floors of homes around the world as whatever happened to be in or on them, including peoples whose faces were clearly visible by the labels. We just saw that. 
the labelers discuss Project I.O. at Facebook, Discord, and other groups that they have set up to share advice on handling delayed payments, talk about the best paying assignments, and request assistance in labeling tricky objects, right? So when you don't pay people, they start talking about you on Facebook and Discord, right? Which is common, right? So uh, the third-party company needs to um, have better training for their employees, right? And, and actually keep an eye on them, so. So Venezuela has good cyber. No, Venezuela does not have good cybersecurity capability. Good, uh, Venezuela has cheap labor, right? So the grunt worker cybersecurity part of that JM is just labeling, right? I don't think they're good at cybersecurity. They have cheap labor. So like you said, we were looking at those images. They had to go have, these are the lights, right? These are pictures. These are cabinets, right? That's low level work that's super cheap. So I think they did it because they were the cheapest. And when you do stuff like that, you're going to go Villa, Venezuela, Saigon, a lot of poor third world countries because you can have them lay them, label stuff all day and just pay them $2. And a lot of those countries speak English decently, right? So that's work they could do. Uh, so that, I robot confirmed that the 15 images was postly, uh, uh, posted I'm sorry, posted in the groups and subsequently sent to MIT review, shared a spreadsheet listing specific dates where they were made between June and November 2020. Countries that came from the United States, Japan, France, Germany, and Spain. The serial numbers of device that produced the images as well as com columns indicated that a consent form had been signed by the device users. Scale I confirmed that 13 to 15 images came from an R&D project uh, working on iRobot over two years, though it declined to identify clearly the origins or additional information of the two images, right? So they knew who signed it, and so they knew what house it came from and what images were those. What? Uh, but such actions are nearly impossible to police on a cloud sourcing platform. Uh, Kevin, a CEO of high skills competitors also depends on contract workers if he's aware of a data labeling sharing content on social media he is blunt these are dis uh, disputed workers he said you have to assume that people ask each other for help and the policy always says that you're not supposed to but it's very hard to control so for me it sounds like he's kind of giving up and just saying that's business as usual right so if i'm a premier company i'm not using this guy's third party stuff that means it's up to the service provider to decide whether or not it takes certain work we don't think we have the right to control the place given our workforce it's effectively protect sensitive data how it does not work with any robot vacuuming company it's sort of surprising to me that images got shared on a crowd sunning platform the prison investor at I'm sorry, principal investigator at Princeton University Visual AI Lab, co-founder of Group AI4. All keeping them labeling them in house where folks are in a strict NDA and on companies' computer will keep the data from keep the data far more secure. That's going to be far more expensive, though. I'm talking about a thousand times more expensive when you do stuff like that. In other words, relying on far-flung data and annotators to simply not a secure way to protect your data. We have data that we've got for customers. It would normally reside in a database with access protection. Warden, a leader of computer vision, research and PhD student, student at Harvard. But with machine learning training, customer data is all combined in a, in a big batch, widening the circle of people who get access to the data. Once again, they just showing you the annotation, light, AC, outlets the shapes, right? So that's them annotating what the vacuum sees, right? So in the future, when it sees that, it knows what it what it is, right? Now, for its part, our robot is sharing only subsets of training images with data annotation partners, black any images with sensitive information, notifies the company's chief privacy officer if sensitive information is detected, Balls and cause that situation where it adds when it does happen, the entire video log, including images that deleted from the iRobot server. 
The company specified when an image is discovered with a user in compromised position, including nudity, partial nudity, uh, sexual interaction is deleted in addition to all other images from that log. It did not clarify whether flagging would be done automatically by the algorithm or manually by the person and why that did not happen in the case of the woman on the bathroom. Our policy, however, does not deem faces sensitive, even if the person is a minor. In order to teach robots to avoid humans and images of human uh, feature that is promoted to privacy where a customer, the customer first needs to teach the robot what a human is. That's a good point in this in sense it's necessary to first collect data of humans to train a model the, the implication of a face must be part of the data that's a good point the robots got to know what a human is uh two dollars per day uh probably a little more than that but it's dirt cheap over there when, when you do that type of work i mean hell they make jordans for what nine dollars a day so <laughs> elevation i'm sure this is gonna get paid less than making Jordan, so it's probably it's it's probably super down there. Let's skip some of that, right? We know we got to recognize the people. We find the people, right? That's the facial recognition, so it knows what a face is. Let's see what the lawmakers are doing. Initial lawmakers and enforcing privacy with view biometrics, including face as sensitive. Uh, Jessica, a privacy law firm from the FTC. Uh, Bureau of Commission Protection between 2013 and 17. This is especially the case if any minors are captured on camera. Getting consent from employee's tester isn't the same as getting consent from a child. The employee does not have the capacity to consent or data collection from other event individuals, let alone children that appear to be implicated, right? So they're weighing in. And two is, that's why I believe privacy is the next big bag because they got to figure all this stuff out and People are going to start getting big fines for big companies, right? So surprise, you may have agreed to this, and we talked about that from the T's and C's, terms and conditions. The robot vacuum manufacturer uh, themselves re recognized the highest, the heightened privacy risk presented by on-device cameras. When you made the decision to invest computer vision, you do not have, you do have to be very careful with privacy and security. Uh, I robot CTO, you're giving the benefits to the pro to the product and the consumer, but you also have to be treating privacy and security at the top priority, right? So that's the new thing. I wouldn't call it new people. Uh, they're kind of merging security and privacy together. It's all under the uh, CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, and of course the CTO, the Technology Officer. Uh, all of this comes under your security program and how you handle it. It has implemented many privacy and security protective measures in customer devices, including using encryption, regularly patching security vulnerability, limiting monitoring employee access to information, providing customers with detailed information of data they collected. But there's still a wide gap between what the companies talk about privacy and the ways consumers understand it, right? Because when you start reading terms and conditions, right, it's going to be different than how people hear it. Right, so that's why you're gonna have big federal uh, legislations. So yeah, I'm kind of flowing down to the bottom. Uh, our robot co-founder Helen, who now runs a startup called Turk that sells garden weeding robots, emphasized that collecting all this data, companies are not trying to violate their customer privacy; they're trying to build better products. Or in our robot case, makes a better, make a better clean. Still, even the best efforts coming like iRobot clearly leaves gaps in privacy protection. It's like a maliciousness thing, but just incompetence. <laughs> he said the IoT hacker developers are not traditionally very good at security stuff. Their attitude becomes try to get the functionality and the functionality is working, ship the product. And that's what we just talked about. And that's what you got to train developers to stop doing. Right. The functionality, ship it. Now you got to have security sign off on that. And this is the scary part. Robot vacuums are just the beginning, right? There's going to be a ton of more products that's coming. The appetite for data only increases over the years. Vacuums are just a tiny subset of connected devices that are proliferating across our lives. Big name uh, robot vacuums, iRobots, uh, Samsung Dyson's are vocal about their amb 
exhibition is much grander than automating floor Kenny. Robotics, including home run box, have long been a British prize. Consider Mario Munchie, the senior vice president of technology at Robot, Robot, explained in 2018 in a presentation the company first computer vision vacuum he showed image device, including one of a kitchen with table, chairs, and stools. Next, they will label and perceive the robot's algorithm. The challenge is not with the vacuum. The challenge is with the robot. We would like to know the environment so we can change the operation of the robot. Like we said, I think we're trying to get to the Jetsons part of just more than cleaning, but have a personal assistant, right? So I think that's the future. JM, I feel like Europe is taking the lead when it comes to privacy. Most definitely. When you're in Europe, when you're browsing website, most of them get permission. Yep. Definitely. GDPR is definitely more restrictive, but you got to know in the United States, one of the bad part about that is most big companies have lobbyists, right? And the lobbyists pay a legislator, right? So they actually bend the legislation. You don't Europe doesn't work like that, right? So you don't have the lobbyist feel, but now you're 100% correct. The lobbyist uh, actually controls a lot of the legislature that ends up being um, written. The company makes robots are already investing in other features and devices to bring users closer to ro robotics enabled future. The later robots can be voice controlled through Nest and Alexa. They recognize 80 different objects around your home. Robot vacuum integrated with companies' voice assistants, while Samsung is one of several companies developing, like we said, companion robots to keep humans company. Millie sells for RS2 Scout Vision. Because the real big thing people don't realize is my mom was in a nursing home before she passes. Half the battle in the nursing home and keeping person home is getting a bathroom and them to be able to move around safely. So if you can have a robot just help people to the bathroom and when they fall down, help them get up or have them take vitals of patients, that's a billion dollar market, right? So I think that's the next move. And you could tell that because Amazon paid $1.7 billion for uh, iRobot. Uh, the FTC hasn't approved it yet because they know they try to figure out what's the end game which is considering mergers on effective competition the smart home place rumble is likely to become even more integrated in amazon vision for always on smart homes right so that's the move right is the smart home let's see what they talk about the smart home right uh boom surprisingly boom boom uh, FTC has taken action. Uh, consumers are trading, training artificial data, ultimately forcing companies like Weight Watchers International, photo app developer to delete both the data collecting algorithms built in, right? Because data is really the new goal. Shout out to Engineering Cannabis. He always talk about if they're making this much money with your data, how much is your data really worth, right? So that's always the big, the, the big issue with that, right? So but that's pretty much it um once again we're gonna do more stuff for this rumba rumba mapping your home uh they're gonna put cameras on the rumba robot because they really want it to be assistant right they really want it to be the jetsons right and with the the, the, the cleaning maid right because you really want to get to personal assistance that's really the the big bag right and don't let's not be confused like rumba sold and those together right so billions of dollars in <laughs> in low level vacuums right but the next version of that right is getting the home assistant the next version of that amazon's already in your house right to get more information the house right it's gonna make it more convenient for you but once again your privacy is gonna be be sold out right to 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 the government to the company um and that's how they make money, right? So, um, selling your data. So tomorrow's hump day. I want everybody to have a great hump day. Have a great week. Enjoy your holiday. Um, once again, <laughs> I'm usually trying to go late night with PBO on a Tuesday. I think it's going to be my, my slot. Um, 
I know I see mo the most of you around on the internet. Um, if you need to get at me, give me a couple of days. I'm usually at professorblackops at gmail.com. If you go to my about page on YouTube, it has my um, email address on there. Um, we still go on to um, AWS class every Sunday at 3. If you watch the football game, just check out my replay. Um, I always appreciate the support y'all give me. Um, let's see. Oh, no problem. Elevation, that's what we do here, right? Oh, yeah, that's why I came to the internet. Um, obviously, you know, I got 30 years in IT. I got about 50 in cybersecurity. I turned 53 this year, so I got a bachelor's in computer science, and I got an MBA. So uh, that's kind of my background in the IT game. I've been doing federal-level security. I worked for DOD for 10 years, and I worked for a large state agency for 10 years, doing federal compliance, reporting to the IRS, reporting to DOD. Uh, check out my replay. Oh, I didn't go last Saturday. It was Christmas, JM. I think I took I took Christmas off, JM. <laughs> if you go to one before that, I did. But last Saturday was Christmas. I didn't do Jack. I just I just slept all day. I've been for some reason I've been super tired. I've been on my grind, so I'm trying to um get a little rest for 2023. Get here, so I got to do a little more grinding. So uh, I'm gonna start studying for my CISP. That's kind of my goal in 2023. I should have did that two years ago. But once again, I'm out. Everybody check the replay. I appreciate you joining me. Oh, my hold tight. I got Chaos Rain in the in the queue. I almost missed him. Let me see. Yeah, man. Hello. Hello. Hey, man. What's going on? Hey, what's good? What's good? I hope you just should drop it a little early so anybody want to have questions, they could come up. Y'all guys being scared. Don't be scared. You're talking to a man that is very qualified, man. You know, as I told um, Professor Black Ops on another stream about, you know, automating things, oh, that it, it, it can be problematic. It can be even considered scary. Well, you forgot we are in the 21st century now. All that what you've seen, all the cartoon animations, the most popular tech movies of the 80s, not the 70s, the 80s. And I can name something off the back of my head that we even see to the present day the present day we are here now and one thing you remember i don't know if you ever covered this i'm gonna come on you doing youtube now on um, professor black ops so they get how long no so i don't know if you ever covered this type of article story um you you you've been on youtube for now for like two years right yep mm -hmm. okay so you probably not talk about it you remember the one with the artificial intelligence with the real real facial person of a person that was created by a, i think it was a white white person that created a black so-called android looking one that speaks expressions and stuff you remember that uh, that was back in 2018. i don't think i've seen that one to be honest I, I mean i forgot the name of the article it was a while back i, I never covered because i did not start doing content till the till next year okay okay but is it ironic and and mind you back then they said that they want to have the same artificial intelligent living bots like the ones that you know like a like you know like i robot type bots you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah the proxy with faces and stuff yeah they said this was to roll those out in five years that was 2018 and a no, few months we're going to be 2013 we're now roughly in five years since the talk about that in the production or the even the makings now my you what movies coming out that are similar like that? Oh man, there's been a ton of them, man. No, no, that's coming out in 2023. I don't know. I don't, I don't even follow movies like that much anymore. Well, let me know. see if anybody knows in the chat room. Give them a hint. I give you a few minutes. But uh that's look just like a a real person, an android type thing. The expression a, a movie's coming out in a, in a month or two. That's going to display this in real, um, like you know, actual movie. That's I don't I mean. knows. But anyway, I, I'm gonna keep talking, and people will I give people a chance to think. But yeah, um, these things like the Jetsons, and you know, surprisingly, they never made a Jet a Jetsons movie. Ever know that? I thought they made one. They I never. Think. They made every other movie that they made by Hanna Barbera. Those anime from the Flintstones. Uh. 
some other cartoons I can't remember. They might maybe some other ones might have made a movie of Hanna Barbar, but that was the only one I can remember that was more popular. I, think, I thought they made one Jetson movie. I don't think he did. Bro. No, they never. They never made. They never looked at making a Jetsons movie. I might have I'm not sure that's why we talking. But I, I was thinking now, and it has to be anime. It could actually be a live Jetsons movie that they should have been came out the last ten years, even twenty years ago. They should have came out with this. They made one. I'm looking it up. It came out in 1990. Oh. No, I'm talking about a live, like you know how the Flintstones, the live Flintstones, like you know the start. Oh, okay, on. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, no, not no, the anime because right. we, we watch anime. We're talking about actual anime no, with you. to a real life type thing. No, no, I'm with you. You're right. They never right came up, and they never think of making one yet. And I think the timing is now because that was set um the 22nd, 23rd century. I don't know what we, what century that was. Anybody know what century that was? But yeah, I don't know either. Man. Okay, so no one doesn't know. It, it, it's Megan. Oh, uh, is it? I, I like I said, I would have to Google that. I haven't really seen. Google, Google it right now. Google movie Megan. Make sure I like the stream. I'm gonna give y'all some little insight. Cause it's slowly promoting this movie now. I don't know if you see anything pop up. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on screen. I'll see it. I'll see it on screen. All right. Let's see, switch it, switch it. Man, that see that now mind you when when i was just thinking about this and they slowly start promoting this movie and it's coming out the first week of january it makes it go back and think deeply about that thing they were trying to produce and make back in 2018 and they said they were going to try bring in mass production and start slowly you know advertising it in a way so I'm thinking for that to really come forth because people don't know much about because they didn't read the article. What's the second best thing of promoting anything? Put in film. No, that's true. This is a highly artificial intelligence. Now, this is a, a sci-fi slash horror movie, right? But people forgot the that this person created some that's artificial intelligence that's supposed to move and interact with humans to give like companionship. The, the person that was creating this so-called same thing, because one person that they were closely in love with, and she was black, she actually created a living image of her. Same thing, back in 2018. And lo and behold, they said that they were going to be in the process of making this like a reality in the next five years. It was Mark, that was in 2018, we're in 2023, and in a few weeks. So saying, the next step, you promote it for a film that's already been talked about and already in production ready years ago. Now, this is going to scare a lot of people because that movie is supposed to be horrified, but they forgot the more subliminal message was going into things. And it's something I remember years ago. And Raxley Behold said, Oh my God, it's almost that time now. So now, what's the best way of marketing? You got to put this in movies now to get people to feel. To see in somewhat reality. No, that's true. Like you said, that's how they socialize about putting in movies. Yeah, this was the best type of socializing. And my everything is timing, mind you. It's the chat GP guru from earlier. No, he was talking about somebody else. No, I think we. I was on another channel. Mm. Or they talking about the artificial intelligence like chat GPI. That's yeah, it. yeah. I was on uh Citizen Lou. We were in Citizen Lou's chat. Uh he did a stream, so okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, like I said, they're now moving into real like real weird science. What's well, that weird science? But it's always been here. But you know, now they're trying to bring more full screen now, you know. Because think about this. When they talk about the automation piece. Some of the less people, more machines doing most of the grunt work from vacuum cleaners, like the. And you know, so I think I have to say this. I never mentioned this. Has anybody ever noticed with um the Jetsons? Who was the black woman or a black archetype woman in the Jetsons? You talking about Rosie the maid? There you go. Yes, yes. And it, and it, and it's hit me. I said, wait. 
it was this it was, it was much black people but they do have them but they take the body types the the same stereotypes as the servants see that is that no. crazy no that's true that's true so so and, and mind you um what's it what's it what's her name Ma- Ma- marty um what do you go megan that's what you call yeah megan it's a big big like a big woman black woman you get me they still put the stereotype say you know our sisters are big and etc you know and i get it but but the point is this that you know these things are put out front so that they condition you that's already ahead you know you know i can get this conversation from all these other gurus maybe some of these tech people they'll talk about the sci-fi this conspiracy theories nonsense and i get it but i tell people nothing is a conspiracy or a theory if you had to wait until it gets to that point it was already too late so they play with you sublimely with images then they put it for you for reality unless you're reading on this ahead of time which so we don't catch every article they put out here some think it's clickbait some think it's some propaganda but i'm saying if you put it throughout the ethers you tell me there's something much more deeper that's ahead that we don't pay attention to you know that's the times where it's not in our control you know even automation that's not our control because a lot of us we work for somebody for a living mostly so obviously if it's something that's repetitive obviously you always got to think down the line can it be something else could do it easier you get me we don't think like this we think that everything's secure that's why i hear people say job secure and also i get it but people are saying unless you're the creator of it you are not secure in an environment that is not yours you know all these games that make you go through hoops is to keep making you spend money for you don't get no nothing in return you know because you don't understand how systems work you know and a lot of us it's not our fault we're this edge council doesn't work we, we should make the country able to understand it but really if you're in an environment that's supposed to capitalize on you you think it's in the best to teach you these things no that's why when people talk about the edge case system here in america how it's so subpar and almost bottom last it's a reason for that because they want to people to keep producing worker bees and consumers you know no that's true that is it you, and there's no way around it. now if people wisen up they can probably make a change possibly but overall as long as you operate in this system or any system that has these same predatory things that was created through here for the west you always gonna run into the same problems most most of the ideas that everybody gets outside america they got from america let's be honest no, that's true. We, we, we're the first world nation we're the military based nation so we, where people get their ideas and learn things, they learn from here. It's that simple. Oh, that's true. N- nothing's really new from the sun. Nothing's new in the sun. You know, they got to get from somewhere. I remember yes. um, the guy from Germany that we know that did the thing with those people, right? He learned some of his concepts here in America. So, come on. Really, I, I want people to really use their common sense and really think deeper than this, you know? So, but overall, you know, um, besides... The, the, even the title to the stream of head um let's be honest um the i robot it just like what will smith was participating is a reality is here already you know uh one thing with some of these these machines that they are still creating robotics and engineering that you know if people not really understand the engineer side of things you don't understand what really works you know um always they're always in the mindset that really solve props and a lot of us we don't think that we should be solving problems but we should be solving simple problems that is necessary for our preservation at the end of the day unfortunately and if we're not doing that someone else is going to find the problems and get them solved for us and it's not always to our benefit you know overall you know but you know like like i said um um the future is bleak um it's not something people should be afraid of um at, at times preparation is much better than anything else uh i think uh one thing with the automation of many things that's here or eventually will continue down the line is that people should understand where they will be at when things are really the environment is pretty much more than half automated you get me you know and and think about this 
the things that we like to indulge and consume. Imagine now if it's all demand now. That means you're giving these people more money for free and they have to pay much labor at all for the same productivity, you know? Especially when humans are not involved in the manufacture of a lot of things, you know, especially food, you know, like McDonald's and all that stuff, which really is not good for your health in the long run. But I can see why people buy it because it's convenient. But I tell people many times, you know, if you don't know, if you don't understand how what, how food is made and produced now, I mean, you're going to have to be very wise where you put your system over in the long run as a person, oh, especially you get older, as you get oh, older. You know? No, that's true. But I'm about to shut it down, Chaos. Yeah, I am dozing yeah. off, man. I got to get to work. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that's you cool. coming that's up, cool. though. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, so like I said, I'm not really promoting this movie for those to understand, but it, it, it see this, it reminded me of something that was read five years ago. I, I can't remember the name of the article or stuff. I got to find ways to find, figure out what it's called. And if I do figure out, I'm not sure if I'll cover it in January, maybe. But we'll see. But it's a good stream. No, I appreciate you, man. Everybody have a nice weekend. Not weekend, everybody. Nice week. Tomorrow, someday. This holiday got me turned on holiday season. So everybody have a great week. I'll check everybody out. Thanks for coming up, Chaos. Everybody, yes, you're welcome. Okay. Y'all see me again. Check me out on these service streets. Everybody has a great day.